Hi, my name is Ellie Corrigan and this is my consumer intake presentation. My student number is C3537515. Today I'm going to be talking about Coca-Cola and discussing three areas of consumer behaviour theories. I'll be including learning and memory, perception as well as lifestyles and values. I will also be comparing and contrasting against competitors. Coca-Cola was first established in 1886 in Atlanta, the United States, now the other world's largest beverage company. They lead the beverage industry with a portfolio featuring $21 billion brands. According to the Business Insiders, the red and white logo is re recognised by 94% of the world's population. Globally, they are the number one provider of sparkling beverages, juices and juice drinks, as well as ready-to-drink coffees. Coca-Cola's vision is to craft the brands and choices of drinks that people love, to refresh them in body and spirit and done in ways that create a more sustainable business and better shared future that makes a difference in people's lives, communities and on our planet. Here we have a graph from Statistica demonstrating brand value of the most valuable soft drink companies worldwide in 2018. As you can see, Coke boasts a massive value in comparison to its global competitors. Here I have created a perceptual map which demonstrates the positioning in the market along two axes. To demonstrate competitors, I have chosen quality against brand image. Here I have laid out my perceptions of the market. We've got Coca-Cola in the top right hand corner um, for brand image and quality taste. They are the highest with Red Bull following closely after. We've then got also competitors Nestle, Dr Pepper and Pepsi occupying the inside of the right hand square. The first behavioural theory I will be discussing is learning and memory. Learning is the activity or process of acquiring knowledge or skill by studying, practising or experiencing something. According to Solomon, learning can be a relatively permanent change in behaviour that comes with experience. There is numerous ways learning can occur, for example through simple association with a stimulus or a more complicated way through cognitive research. Psychologists who use this viewpoint approach it as a black box, as seen in figure one, consisting of three stages, the observable aspect being the stimuli, what goes into the box or the mind, and then what comes out of the box, which is the reaction to the stimuli. Behavioural learning theories assume that learning takes place when responding to external events. This view has two approaches to learning, classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Classical conditioning occurs when a stimulus that does not evoke a response on its own is paired with a stimulus that gets a response. Over time, the stimulus that did not initially cause a response begins to as it is associated with the stimulus that does. This can be seen in Pavlov's experiment with dogs shown in figure two. Each time Pavlov fed the dog, he rang the bell. This led to the bell becoming a conditioned stimulus, therefore the dog began to associate the ringing of the bell with food. This led to a reaction from the dog as it began to salivate each time the bell was rung due to its new association. Coca-Cola has been using this technique success successfully for years now. A recent example of classical conditioning from Coke would be this epic summer campaign from 2018. For instance, with this campaign, Coke had associated their product with swimming and heat of the summer. Summer is often a theme through their seasonal advertisements. Heat and summer are associated with thirst, therefore when you see a cold can of coke, it stimulates you to feel thirsty, prompting you to buy. One of coke's largest competitors, Pepsi, also uses the technique of classical conditioning in a very similar way. They associate their products with heat or the act of cooling yourself down. This leads to when looking at Pepsi, you feel you need to be cooled down or your thirst to be quenched. This also explains why in Pepsi ads, they focus on the liquid as well as ensure the can is always looking crisp and cold, for example in this 2018 campaign. Operant conditioning is the second learning theory. It occurs as the individual learns to perform behaviour that results in positive outcomes and avoid those that yield negative outcomes. Whilst responses in classical conditioning is invol involuntary, responses in operant conditioning are deliberate in order to gain. Here we have an example of operant conditioning. This campaign in 2018 offered customers who purchased and recycled a bottle of Coke 50% off a Merlin Entertainment's attraction. 
These include Alton Towers, Legoland and other famous British attractions. These benefits prompted people to purchase as they gained good discounts on expensive items. Memory involves a process of acquiring information and storing it over time so that it will be available when needed. According to Solomon, marketers are reliant on consumers retaining information so it can be applied and utilised when buying in the future. Research supports the idea that marketers can distort a consumer recall of an experience with it product. An example of when Coca's used memory as part of their marketing would be in 2019 they introduced the magic of taste the magic taste of coke campaign. This was to tap into consumer memories of their first taste of coke. After the woman in the campaign drinks the coke, the tongue shows all their good previous memories that are associated with the brand. Coke uses the sense of taste to glorify the taste through the associating with good memories of the consumer. This memory aims to persuade the consumer to buy Coke. Perception is the process in which the senses are absorbed by the consumers and then used to interpret the surrounding world. Perception is the process in which these stimuli are selected, organised and interpreted. There are three stages, sensation which is the stimuli, interpretation then followed by a response. This influences the outcome of perception. Part of perception is sensory marketing. Sensory marketing is where companies pay extra attention to the impact of sensations on our product experience. It can be defined as marketing that engages the consumers, senses and affects their behaviour and perceptions. There are five senses that can be influenced differently. Vision, which can be stimulated through colour, for example, the colour of blue may make the consumer feel peaceful. Hearing, Sound can affect people's feelings and behaviours. For example, some marketers believe that the way a word sounds can influence someone's perception, like when a brand starts with a hard consonant. This could be said for Coke's competitors, Pepsi. The third sense is smell, and according to Solomon, odours can stir emotion and create a calming feeling. They can evoke memories or relieve stress. Taste. Our taste contributes to our perception of many products. For example, marketers use taste test experiments to heighten the positive association with the product. The final sense is touch. Researchers have found that people who touch an item for 30 seconds have a greater level of attachment to the product. This was then enhanced, making them willing to pay for it. They have also found touch can influence sales interactions. For example, people associate textures or qualities with underlying product qualities. Smooth means luxury. This can be said with Coke. The Coke bottle was designed 90 years ago and remains in use today as it is so successful and is using sensory marketing. This is through the sense of touch. The bottle is identifiable even without using the other senses such as sight or taste. Therefore, consumers can easily identify the product and become attached. Pepsi, Coke's largest competitor, has also used sensory marketing through campaigns throughout the years. For example, this campaign for Pepsi Max Cherry in 2015. Pepsi Max partnered with the Robin Collective to launch a four-day pop-up centre in Shoreditch, London. The campaign used multiple sensors which aim to show consumers how different environments and surrounding factors can impact on the taste of Pepsi. In the final category of behavioural marketing, I will be discussing lifestyle and values. Lifestyle refers to a pattern of consumption that reflects a person's consumption and a person's choice and how they spend their time and money. Lifestyle also refers to the attitudes and values that comes with behavioural patterns. A goal of lifestyle marketing is to allow consumers to pursue their chosen ways and to enjoy their lives and express their social identity. Consumers choose products, services and activities that help them to define a unique lifestyle. Figure 4 shows how marketers identify a product, setting and person they are aiming for and determine their desired lifestyle. Here we've got an example of Red Bull, who are another competitor of Coke's. Um, the brand utilises lifestyle marketing really successfully. Red Bull, the energy beverage company, as part of their marketing came up with a new way of life that is admired by athletes, musicians and many more globally. Red Bull positions themselves and markets themselves as a lifestyle brand, saying their items give the consumer wings. Using the slogan, Red Bull gives you wings, they pitch themselves as a fun brand that exerts adventure, creativity and challenge, aiming for those who aspire to have a thrill-seeking lifestyle. 
Co-branding strategies can be used as part of lifestyle marketing. Co-branding is where they team up with other companies to promote two or more brands. Researchers suggest that a relatively unattractive product becomes more appealing when consumers link it to something that they like. Many people evaluate their products, not just in terms of function, but in terms of design and how it coordinates with other objects. Here we have a very recent 2020 campaign where Coca-Cola have collaborated with Vape. This co-branding relationship has created bespoke bottles completed with special graphics. Despite being exclusive to the Japanese market, each item having unique baked designs made the items exclusive. This co-branding partnership has brought together beverage and fashion targeting consumers with a specific lifestyle. Another part of lifestyle marketing is values. Values are centrally held cognitive elements which stimulate motivation for a behavioural response. Despite the fact values can differ throughout each culture, in many cases values are universal, for example within spe specific market segments, such as in America they have core values which include freedom, youthfulness, achievement and materialism. A research model related to values is the means and chain model. This approach assumes that people link product attributes to terminal values. So we've got it on the slide here, a diagram of how that works. Consumer value products to the extent that they can provide the means to some end that they desire. An example of Coke using values could be this campaign, encouraging recycling of their plastic bottles. This campaign is reminding consumers of Coke to look after the planet. This, the means to end chain model can be applied to this example. Concrete product attribute would be Coke is made from plastic bottles. The abstract product attribute would be the plastic bottles can be recycled and reused. The functional consequence or the benefit is that they can help to then create a sustainable planet. In the self-knowledge section of the model, we've got psychosocial consequences, which is the benefits. The consumer feels that they are personally being sustainable. The instrumental values, which is them caring for the planet, and then the terminal values, which is the better planet means a better quality of life. This is a really good example, as research suggests that sustainability is a new core value. According to Solomon, this is known as conscientious consumerism. In 2007, researchers did a study that found 8 out of 10 US consumers believe it is important to buy green brands and that they will pay more to do so. Coke, as part of their mission statement, is that they aim to be a sustainable brand and have a sustainable planet. So this is a really good way of marketing for them. In summary, consumer behaviour analyses how people make decisions on buying products and services. This presentation displays the different ways in which Coke utilises marketing strategies using learning and memory, perception and lifestyle and values. Throughout this presentation, I have outlined ways in which both Coke and competitors use these three areas to influence the behaviours of consumers. Due to Coke having large, a large reputable brand name, it results in marketing strategies being hugely successful pretty much, helping to maintain their massive market share. However, competitors do partake in similar marketing strategies, which have also been seen as successful. It may be good for Coke to try and find a new area of influence in consumer behaviours to set themselves even further apart from competitors. Um, thank you for listening to my presentation and here are my references.